Hey, Strick. So, you know, on Nice Guys on Business podcast, we uh, have never offered a free gift and today is the day. Well, I think we've maybe offered junk gifts before, but nothing really handy like what we're going to offer right now. Five ways to make money podcasting. Oh, this is going to be really cool. So five ways to make money podcasting, turnkeypodcast.com forward slash gift. If you go to that link and we'll put it in the show notes, you'll see the one way that we have used to make a six figure income from our podcast. And we can teach you how to do the same thing too. Just get the free gift. Let's start there. Once again, turnkeypodcast.com forward slash gift. Hey, this episode is not going to suck like the last one. No, here's what you can look forward to with the nice guys on business. So through these partnerships, we can actually develop more of what we love. And the more that we focus on what is our core thing, the thing that really lights us up, makes us feel good. We're just going to attract more of that because we're, we're talking about it more on the podcast. We're talking to on your show, you know, other shows and, and sending emails. And sooner or later, like it's, it's actually so fucking easy to transition into stuff that you love because you just talk about it and, and people can hear that you're genuinely excited about it. I don't need you to tell me how fucking good my coffee is, okay? I'm the one who buys it. I know how good it is. I buy the gourmet expensive stuff because when I drink it, I want to taste it. But you know what's on my mind right now? It ain't the coffee in my kitchen. It's the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Reach in there and grab my wallet. It's the one with bad motherfucker on one side and the nice guys on business on the other. Boom, boom, sh- boom, 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 sh- oh, yeah. Hey, do you guys know you, you, you normally hear the, the normal band playing in the background, but <laughs> I, heard, I, heard, I heard the little wiki wiki. Joel has got this. So everybody check this out. So nice guy community. Joe Fear has been on the show before. He is the uh, chief evangelist over at the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast, along with his good buddy and uh, chief muckety muck, Matt Wolf. These guys are legit. They built a seven figure business following a marketing bouncing ball all along the way. They help other podcasters do the same thing. And um, what I love about Joe is uh, you can build a seven-figure business and still be a, a humble and a nice guy. So uh, I'm happy to have him here today on the show. I, I'm not sure where his partner, Matt Wolf, is. I think he's probably off sailboarding or doing... What, what do you guys do in San Diego exactly? <laughs> we just... Uh, it's it's kind of cold and windy right now. So we're huddled, huddled inside. Oh, cold, oh, oh, oh. Like okay. So it's November. It's almost November as we're just about Halloween as we are uh, recording this. And cold and windy in San Diego is like it's 71 as opposed to 72. <laughs> we have to put on pants and sweatshirts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to put on pants when I do my job too. And But that's actually why I dumped the professional speaking world for the podcasting world because I actually don't have to put on long pants pretty much ever and well, i live in southern california that's cool thing, right it's Day like again? a yeah you can you can wear sweats or whatever below but as long as it's business from waist up then yeah you know, so so i was saying to, to joe before he, he uh we hit record I, I got my good t-shirt on today i think it's the one that says all those that are wandering aren't lost or something like this something like, <laughs> like that it. <laughs> but all that are lost are definitely wondering what the fuck am i doing where am i heading Hey, man, Joe, I appreciate you coming back here. This is your second time on the Nice Guys on Business. I think uh, the first time was episode 839 just in January of this past year. I'll put a link in the show notes, everybody, so you have a chance to do this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a, a Joe line at you here, Joe and Matt line. Hey, um, if you're listening to the episode and you're going to get some great information, we've already taken the notes for you. So uh, you just go ahead and click on the problem is, Joe, I haven't taken any fucking notes from him. So. <laughs> Can you tell me how to do that? I don't know how to do that. Sure. Yeah. No, dude, it's, thanks for having me back on. And I love the intro as well, the little bio. <laughs> that, was, I, that was awesome. I'm like, I'm try, I was trying feverishly to write your bio. as Of course, I do all of my, uh, my vast research for every guest that comes on the show about 10 minutes before they come on the show. <laughs> I'm giving away a little bit of a hidden secret there. You know, if you really want to put some good quality time into your guests, give them 11 minutes. So I actually gave you 10 minutes because I had you on the show before and that took a little bit of time to you know, a little bit of background. <laughs> yeah. At least you're honest. You know, that's why we like you, man. That's why. Talk to me. Thanks, Joe. Well, talk to me about hustle and flow chart. Let's start there. And then I want to get into a little bit of, about pod hacker. And then I want to talk about the seven figure marketing business that you've grown, uh, you know, mm-hmm. scaled through your, through your own podcast as well. So uh, tell me about hustle and flow chart podcast. Cause this is a, this is a cool thing. I mean, you guys are, it's life, but it's business at the same time. Ooh, right. Yeah. I would say that's a good blend of what it is. It's life and business, you know? So uh, on the surface level, it's a 
business slash marketing show where, you know, we're chatting with amazing entrepreneurs like you do as well. And we bring out the cool stories. We bring out different uh, experiences. They've had the ups and downs. We try to get as much, uh, as much real as possible, the human story behind the business. Yeah. But really at the end of the day, we're trying to extract these tactics and strategies that our listeners can actually implement and give a shot, you know, try out. That's why we're, so it's a blend of, you know, life business, a little bit of that, not fluff, but like, you know, the stuff where people can relate to, but then also, Hey, here's a handful of things in your toolkit you can add to, or you can add to your toolkit. And like you were saying, we provide the notes for free. Uh, we also have this interesting physical newsletter, uh, monetized system happening behind the podcast. I'd make fun of you about the the whole thing of mailing it out. I could see you kind of go into the mailbox with a, <laughs> like a stack of these big old uh, nine by 11 or eight by 12 kind of, uh, you know, pamphlets ready to go out. But shit, it works. <laughs> it, it really does. works because nobody gets any mail. What do you get when you go to the mailbox? You get all circulars and bills, right? Exactly. And that's the thing is like, we want to own or at least be one of the extremely few things in the mailbox that you actually want to open and read. And you're expecting every single month. So we yeah, like you're, <laughs> I need to, that'd be awesome. If I actually shipped everything out. Um, make a big, you know, some video. I don't know. I was going to say viral video. <laughs> Here goes Joe to the mailbox. <laughs> Joe the mailman. I I'm going to make it, it happen. Actually, I love that idea. <laughs> so. so when when did you guys? When did you and Matt connect? Because while yeah. there are so many similarities to you guys, personality wise, you guys have a you know, pretty cool sense of humor, and and uh, it's just fun listening to your show. And I'll share a couple of the couple of the episodes that I listened to in the uh, in the show notes as well, especially one where you guys kind of get uh, into the therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is it about you guys that you think gels so well? Because you really have this well put together, well oiled, just well intentioned show that a lot of people, and I would say I look to your show for, wow, that's really a good way to host co-host kind of thing and actually bring some great business and value to your listeners as well. How did you know it was going to gel like that? Yeah, it's a, it's it's evolved over time and and <laughs> as you were just exposing a little bit of the 11 minute research that you typically give your guests. Um <laughs> we do a little bit more than that, but at the same time <laughs> So I thought I was thought I was being relatable here. Thanks, Joe. No, no, you are. Though. This, I was going to say, but we have a team member that actually takes the notes for us or does research. And in in full honesty, it's probably under ten minutes. We're actually reading these notes. Okay, good, good. good. I don't so, feel so bad anymore. So you, no, you're you, pay, good, you pay somebody else to do that. Good, exactly. So no, but we definitely try to research and really. But at the end of the day, you know, Matt and I, we're we're two brothers, not real bio brothers, but. Uh, we we act that way, so we don't have the same personalities. He's a lot more um, in the how, in the analytical mindset, which yeah. uh, which is amazing. And I'm in I would say I would say fucking genius. I mean, he oh. just seems like as I listen to him talk. Not that I don't. I kind of relate to you a little bit more, and Strickland definitely relates to to Matt because I'm like, how do you guys just how do you how do you know that shit? And I just don't even understand how he knows most of the stuff that he knows. He's just a he's he's got a, a special brain that's like perfect for that, but also he's obsessive over learning and implementing, like experimenting, which is so damn cool because that's the core of uh, so so many of the things that we're constantly trying and testing out. And like I've told him, I'm like I swear I uh, we want to safeguard you as much as possible because he's <laughs> he's got mass like amazing marketing brain and. Um, and I'm over here. I don't know how the hell I'm I'm still <laughs> attached to or working with him and things are working out. But, you know, I'm, I've got a lot more of the visionary uh, brain, more of the bigger picture. And what if we try this with that thing that you're testing out, Matt? So basically, he'll come up with like, holy crap, this is a great content marketing strategy. And then usually my brain goes immediately to like, oh, well, what if we try that with this, this, and this? And then maybe we just link them all together. And then usually we prune a little bit so we don't overwhelm ourselves. Oh, but. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I want to talk about overwhelm as far as uh, having your own business. And I know it's the two of you. I know you have some team, but really, it really is just the two of you. I mean, you're the, the, the brainchilds, brain children's behind. You guys get to make words up. I, every time I make up a word, it just doesn't even sound like it really should. Like I was listening to one of your later podcasts. I think it was actually the therapy session you were doing in Orlando when you were at yeah. Podcast Movement or PodFest or wherever you were. Yep, yep. 
guys were making up words left and right. And they made sense. It made <laughs> sense. It just, I make up words and people are like, what did he just say? That just doesn't even make sense. How is that something? I don't so, know what it is. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, so how, I know where you're coming from. I mean, you're like, how am I lucky enough to feel like I can work with Matt? And I feel the same with Strickland. I'm like, well, they let me just la di da over here and, you know, build the relationships and help them close some deals and be a big picture thinker and come up with products. And every time I come up with like a service that we're going to offer our production company clients, mm. Strick's like, yeah, I can build that. I'm like, you can? <laughs> so I keep coming up with things that, he want, that I want him to build and he just continues to build them. And it's amazing to me. We're creating this, this really cool business from stuff that it was like vapor before we got started. Yeah. And that's really, I think that, that makes a good partnership. And also you don't need to have a partner, you know, for that. It could be someone in your business. Um, so yeah, for us, you know, going back there, there are the two of us, we're the brain children of, uh, of this whole thing that we call house home fluid or evergreen profits really is the overall brand. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we do have, you know, an ops operations manager, Shannon, who she actually is running so much of the business. Oh, I talked to Shannon and I'm like, Oh no, without Shannon, that whole organization breaks down. (laughs) No, 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 100%. 100%. And that's the thing is, uh, and uh, for a long time, we did not have a Shannon in our lives. And, uh, you know, Matt and I get a lot of stuff done, but at the same time, you know, and Matt is absolutely efficient in what he gets done. And I feel like I am in certain spurts and sprints, but, um, you know, we're always going to just get the stuff done. And us as humans, uh, the stuff that we kind of want to get done. Yeah. So that leaves a lot not getting done. And sometimes it's the boring, like, you know, Oh, we got to pull financial reports on the month or pay these people or do admin stuff, bookkeeping, uh, answer questions. And it's like, yeah, (laughs) get new clients. Yeah, (laughs) All all the boring stuff. (laughs) That's it. That that I feel like is the easy part. It's more like, all right, what's the fulfilling, the onboarding, the systems and all the stuff behind the scenes that I know I I created this great marketing piece for a, uh, it's called uh, shit. I don't even remember what the name of the program is that I can, uh, what, what the hell is the name of the program? Be, be a great guest workshop. I mean, I created this whole thing and I'm like, okay, it was like a a 15 or a 10 minute little infomercial that people are going to click on to see if they if they're up to snuff to be a great guest on the nice guys i'm like shoot i should sell like a full program on this just to kind of you know introduce people to not only the world of podcasting but teach them how to be a great guest and then if they love being a great guest why wouldn't they like being a great podcast host as well Mm. and i forgot i mean it took me like a day and a half sitting literally at my computer for for 10 hours 12 hours a day writing this this program like oh, this is just like the marketing piece. This isn't even like the fulfillment. I'm like, oh no, I actually have to create a program behind this that actually is going to work. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that gets, that gets me in the weeds. I just get so overwhelmed. How do you guys stop from overwhelm? Well, that's a, it's a constant, like, I feel like there's a build and contract phase back and forth. That's what Matt and I always have said is, and to not get overwhelmed, I feel like we both have our own approaches. Like Matt, not, Matt is a lot more the how, like I was saying. So I think he likes, well, I know he likes simplicity. We both love simplicity. So you, whenever things get a little too far out of our grasp, I think uh, it's pretty obvious because we get a little bit of an anxious feeling. Like we feel it in our guts first. Yeah. And I think everyone has their own yeah. triggers that they can attach to. But then then it's just figuring out, okay, so what's actually essential? What's the goal you're trying to hit? Maybe it's a monthly goal that you're putting out for yourself that's like double than you're making right now, which is something we're doing for ourselves right now. Is like wow. we've been a lot of people will get um kind of get stuck in like a similar goal, like a pattern of comfort. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember I remember my big crybaby moment at New Media Summit. It's yeah, like, yeah. I can't see if they got over like two hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, oh my God, just shut the fuck up. I'm like right. nobody wants to hear me whine about it. But you know, my whining about it, like the next year we doubled that. It was like, okay, oh, yeah. now now we gotta take that same theory and keep going. But I, I, I hear totally what you're saying. So I, how are you getting there? So we're getting there through uh, figuring out what's essential. What are the things that actually light us up? Like, what are we great at? And then we're trying to shave off the rest. So, you know, like shaving off 
<laughs> Production's a perfect example, actually. Great example. I love uh, this example. This is one that I benefit from, so I love this. A hundred percent. And full transparency, like we fucking hate it. We don't want to be in the middle of the production. We know we can do it, but then that means that we're going to have to staff up. We're going to have to do something different that we're like is out of our norm, even though we're being approached all the time for people asking, hey, can you help me with this? Or what do you recommend for this? Da, da, da. Um, with podcast marketing, we are podcasting as a whole. We realize we excel in the marketing and the monetization side of things, not the foundational, the core systems of a podcast, the production and all that. So that's why we went to you and Strick. And we're like, hey, <laughs> we got to, we, we, we love you guys. We know you guys are amazing and you do this every day. So we love, we love uh, partnerships, broker relationships. I mean, they're partners in our eyes are all the same. So yeah, any yeah. way that you can partner up and shave off the stuff that feels like friction to, uh, in your business, in your, with your personality, in your gut feelings, like, and you got to find the right partners. So that's why we love you guys. And because there's definitely a lot of partners that will suck drop the ball or maybe make you look bad. You don't want those partners. No, we never, you know, and that's never the intention. Um, you know, being human, that sometimes is what happens, not, not in a uh, perpetual state, but it's like, oh man, we dropped the ball on that. We know we dropped the ball. And it's like, how do you come to the table and apologize to a customer and to your partner? So everybody feels comfortable on the other side. Cause yeah, I mean, that's happened to us before somebody refers something to us. This was earlier in our business. And we're like, Hey, we can do that. We know we can, we haven't done it yet, but we're, like we we're pretty open with it. We haven't done it yet. We're going to try though. And I'm sure that we're going to be, we're great with it. Like, Oh no, Strick, we suck at that. We really <laughs> You know, like for us, show notes was one of those things that were just like the bane of our existence, writing show notes for people. And mm. that was just like, oh, it was horrible. And finally, when we found someone that is kind of like your Shannon, our Chelsea, yeah. uh, to, uh, to do that, we're like, oh my gosh, the lights open and she actually enjoys doing that stuff and writing content. I'm like, oh, I hate that Go stuff. Go figure. Right. I, that's, I think that's, that's actually key what you're saying right there because this is like right now, Matt and I are going through a, a big transition in our business where we are pruning a lot. A lot of the stuff we've done in the past um, is just not stuff that lights us up or or it's out of our control, like with affiliate marketing, for instance. Like mm -hmm. that's not mm -hmm. in our total control. It's great right. and all. That's how we did. We have built a seven-figure business on top of mainly affiliate marketing, which is great. And that's not going away. But, um, you yeah, know, like we really figured out, okay, so through these partnerships, we can actually develop more of what we love and the more that we focus on what is our core like thing the thing that really lights us up makes us feel good we're just going to attract more of that because we're we're talking about it more on the podcast we're talking to on your show you know other shows and and sending emails and sooner or later like it's it's actually so fucking easy to transition into stuff that you love because you just talk about it and, and people can hear that you're genuinely excited about it uh, so for us, it's podcast marketing, monetization, and some growth. And we've been getting approached by some of the big, uh, like one of the biggest marketing companies out there, and they want us to be their podcast, oh, like people gosh. through and through. That's awesome. That, which is crazy. But. Well, you know, but it but it it legitimizes what you just said, which is when you find your zone of genius and you start working in it, you start talking about it, you become more excited and enchanted with it. And it's something that mm -hmm. really glows from within. And people see that. And people now are listening to you because you're not talking about the the uh, the ten things that you do and the two things that you love. Now you're only talking about the two things that you really love, and you're and you're farming out the other stuff. And I, I want to talk just for just a quick moment about, and then I want to get into the whole podcast thing with you because I think that there are sure. a number of podcasters that listen to this, and I think they they would love it. Um, when did you know that you and Matt were going to actually go beyond where your expectation was with your business? Because I think oftentimes, or maybe you always expected it, but at, at some point, were you guys working full-time doing something else and doing this as a side hustle and then open this, this business up full-time for yourselves? Or were you always entrepreneurs with this kind of thinking? We didn't always have the thinking, no. So we were working full-time at his parents' uh, window shutter company. They had a factory here in San Diego. And what the hell is a window shutter? What's that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know. Southern California, you don't see that too often. No. Uh, they're usually richer, nicer homes. Uh, they have the interior instead of blinds, like 
uh, wood blinds or shades. There's these like attachment, like straight up wood shutters, like big slats that. Oh, beautiful. like plantation shutters. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so, I got it. Okay, so and these were the, you were in a was it legitimately a factory? Yeah, so I worked in the office. At, Matt was the um, so it's, it was his parents' company. They owned the thing for I don't know how many years, ten plus, maybe fifteen years. Matt would be better to say that. And um, back in two thousand nine is actually when it kind of all went down. Uh, because of the whole economy, a lot of their stuff was like new builders and stuff like that. But yeah, they had a factory of tons of people in the back. I was more of the admin kind of office manager, phone guy kind of doing a bunch of stuff. Matt was running the factory and also finances and kind of the backbone of a lot of the stuff. But uh, it was there that one of the, it was one of the uh, installers actually came up to either Matt or I or both of us and was like, hey, you guys got to read this book. And it was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, Guy Kiyosaki. Guy Kiyosaki. And, and that was um, oh, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, Rich, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, why did I say Guy? <laughs> who, who is Guy Kiyosaki? Guy uh, uh, Kawasaki. Is, uh, Guy Kawasaki. That's yeah, right. Robert was, Kiyosaki. He was an evangelist for Apple. and Rich Yeah, and sorry. <laughs> Dude, I, I swear, until this very moment, I did not... I did not separate the two. That same guy was the same guy that wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad in my mind. <laughs> Holy shit. You're right, though. These are two separate people. <laughs> they are two different men. I, what an ass I am. Oh, my God. How many times have I misquoted it and somebody on the show is like, yeah, I loved Rich Dad, Poor Dad by <laughs> Guy Kiyosaki. I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. I think guy, right. guy Kawasaki wrote a good book called Enchantment, I believe it's called. So you should right. link that up in the show notes. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> That's right. Hey, uh, Shannon's taking the show notes for us. Just head over, head over to Matt and Joe's website. There you <laughs> You'll go. You have more information on that. Okay, sorry. Anyway, so that's cool. So th- this guy put you together. So he put us like in. Uh, he gave that book to Matt and I to read. I think we both, uh, one of us, read it first, and basically we're like went to the other guy. I forget who. We're like, holy shit, this is the way. Um, what we're doing <laughs> in the day to day, like we're earning an hourly rate wage, and right, right. like that that was okay. Like, but even, and that was never an entrepreneur really growing up. Matt was in an entrepreneur family. That that was the difference between the two of us. But I've always wanted to make it exponentially more. I've always wanted to make more than my mom actually, which was weird. And she always knew that she has a still a good paying job here. And, um, that that was like my drive is more like I'll show you I can do this. That's and, funny because uh, I always I always put you in the entrepreneur bucket. I never thought that you were anything other than that because you are such that big picture person and you have people do stuff that stuff that you don't want to. Do. And I always thought, well, that's just Joe. That's totally what he's all about. He's been an entrepreneur all his life. Sure, he has. So when I asked the question, I was thinking I was going to get the answer. No, no I, I I really have never considered myself a uh, entrepreneur. Is what you gave me. I'm like, really cool. Yeah, it's crazy. I just There's had hope for you, everybody out there. There's hope for you. Yeah, there there really is, and that's yeah. My family didn't understand. Like, I went to college. My mom, uh, I worked within her company for a while. You know, the company she was higher up in. So, it, like, she was like, oh, you got to walk fast. You gotta you gotta you know be here on time early, and yeah, yeah, no, all this shit that I I mean. I do now, but <laughs> I wasn't like totally right, stoked right. to do. Um, but but it instilled good habits in me and all that. But going on back, you know, Matt and I, I think that was or I know that was the big trigger mentally for us was to think bigger and to get out of a day job. And um, how long did it take you guys? To, and did you leave at the same time, or did the uh, closing of the factory kind of decide it for you? Yeah, I, I left before that all happened. So I was still in college at the time. I was dating my my now wife, Heather. And so all this crazy stuff was happening. I was actually like doing multiple jobs, uh, crazy stuff. Matt at the, you know, so I actually ended up quitting because this other job wanted more of my hours. Uh, Matt had a, the, the business was going down. I think it got, it got sold to someone else who was just a total dick. His parents still worked there. And Matt got in a lot of arguments. Like this guy was very abusive uh, verbally, Jeez. and uh, he was not a good guy. So Matt is not a confrontational guy, but I think he got like very lit up around this guy. So he actually ended up quitting. Wow. Uh, still with his parents there, even though this other guy owned the company. 
Um, so and Matt was just those, like, I can't what, do this. Anymore. What were those first? What were those first months or year? How long did it take you before you realized you had your hands on something like, hey, this is actually okay? We made a hundred thousand dollars, and was this kind of side hustle money at that time? And then when did it turn over to full time for both of you? Yeah, so we it was it was literally what two thousand nine. Uh, Perfect <laughs> <crazy>. timing. <laughs> Matt, yeah, Matt and I both got married that same year. We both graduated college that same year, and we both quit our jobs that same year. So, um, and that was Matt was maybe about four months ahead of me. So we we weren't working quote unquote as business partners uh, in these starting years, but we supported each other. So. Um, it took me a little bit to get momentum. He, he went down the path of doing WordPress training and growing an email list and all that automated type stuff where I was working more with clients, uh, helping them with graphics, with video production, and, and uh, helping with product launches since I watched so many of them when I was learning through the phases. So it, it, momentum, it took a little bit, but it was always around our network. So we joined a mastermind and a training course right in the beginning, right before we quit our jobs. Um, and we felt like we had the confidence enough to, you know, grow an email list and we knew, okay, well, it's roughly $1 per subscriber. Well, it's like, okay, well, per month if we have them on an email list. So that's kind of like was the mental state for us. It's like, okay, well, we just got to grow an email list and we'll be able to, you know, whatever our expenses were at the time, I don't know, 2000 bucks, let's call it, you know, it was, we're like, we could cover that, you know, and, and, um, that was really the goal. And once we started seeing momentum through, uh, we did a lot of content marketing, um, together, that was like our first stages. Uh, we saw the money coming in and then from there, we just kind of built upon what we were learning and experimenting with. And then uh, from, from that point to the point where you said, geez, you know, uh, hey, Matt, we, we just went over a million dollars. Do, do you remember, was it a specific wow. day or did it, or, or, or did you just look back on your taxes and say, holy shit, we made, you know, a million two last year. How did yeah. that happen? Honestly, there wasn't like, I can't think of it and Matt might have had his own, but I've, we've just always seen it as a slow progression. Like we've never had like a, I've never done personally a big, pop and launch, you know, like these guys used oh, yeah. to do where it's like yeah. $5 million. I know a lot of the guys <laughs> and I've been their business partners, but <laughs> um, I've never been able to replicate that, nor do I really want to. Um, I feel like Matt and I have just been really good at being consistent and growing our network, putting out good value and, and keeping evolving just everything we do. It's almost like a layered approach. So yeah, it, it's actually more looking back on things, being like, "Holy crap! Yeah, how well, far yeah. we've come." I know. And and how long did it take you to build to where you are right now? So you said 2009 right. is when you guys both quit. You started your you 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 focused all of you. When did you partner together in a project that you said, you know, I think we're going to have to do this together because we're yeah. better together as a pair. So we, <laughs> this is what's weird with us. So it's like, we've kind of like separated, but come still haven't together. figured it out yet. <laughs> he's still, yeah, I mean, still been, working on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, we're, we're, we're totally in together now for the, probably the last four years or so, four and a half years. Um, prior to that, we were together for a little, th but basically we've always created content together. We've always supported each other. Uh, I remember in the garage with Matt, we actually used to own these Suzuki Samurais that um just like <laughs> i know those cars. jeeps <laughs> yeah <laughs> those jeeps with the really crappy plastic back that always gets really cloudy because oh gets, yeah <laughs> they yeah, tip I over all the time oh, yeah, i know the ones you're talking about <laughs> but yeah we used to record these freaking um these videos in matt's garage actually we would on like a friday night we'd have coronas and and, and short yeah you know, sleeveless shirts which are so in not and, uh, <laughs> yeah and, right there's videos of them out there. I think I actually pulled them offline, but they're, I can find some. And, uh, and that was like actually the beginning of our podcast days is now that we, when we go back to it all, it started off by us learning a lot from people like, you know, Tony Robbins, Frank Kern. And so it was always a blend of mindset and business. And still to this day, that's exactly what we love. And uh, we used to just tell people or <laughs> create these YouTube videos that no one ever watched. And that was, that was our way of presenting what we're learning and telling about our experiences. And that's kind of all our podcast is now. It's just, I guess, wrapped up in a nicer box and more people are listening to it. 
So what's so amazing about it, and by the way, I really enjoyed, um, I can't decide if it's Art Garfunkel or Malcolm Gladwell you had on your show. <laughs> don't they look a lot alike? <laughs> I don't know if you realize that, but Malcolm, Ma- Malcolm Gladwell looks very much like Art Garfunkel. And if you haven't recognized it, just go to, to Matt, and, uh, Matt and Joe's homepage. I think you'll, you'll scroll through it and you'll see a picture. Anyway, I'm getting a little awesome. off track here. So you started the podcast in 2017 or before that? Well, let's see here. Yeah. Hustle and flow charts about three years, three and a half years. So yeah, I guess right around that point. Yeah, it was earlier in the year, but we did have some previous shows prior to that point. Um, Our show was an extension of a show that Matt was actually running. So it's weird. Like we've always been a weird hybrid company that just, like I said, it's like, keep building another story to the house, you know, or the building. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's like what that's, they, everybody that's does that. In Cal- that's a Southern California thing. Also, let's avoid all of the excessive property taxes. We can't tear down our, our house completely. We have to leave up a wall, but let's build around this wall. <laughs> we avoid the <laughs> property right. taxes. So link the podcast to your success. Let's get into a little bit yeah. of the podcast conversation. Cause I know that's an integral part of, of what you do now as well. So how essential was it to have a podcast in order to accomplish what you've been able to accomplish? Absolutely essential. And uh, we didn't know it at the time, but uh, essential in the ways that, you know, there's all these branches of why the podcast is rocking for us. But basically, it's a, it's the best networking tool that we have in our business. And I feel like most people can have in their businesses. So, uh, you know, like this is how we're able to, if you check out our website, you can see all the different faces that have, you know, been on our show, all the different people. And the beautiful thing is we keep relationships with, you know, ongoing relationships with at least 80, 90% of those folks. Some folks are, you know, we can, any one of them, we can email anytime we want. And we have a warm connection there. So with their we, we, we're not only getting the trust of our audience and giving a ton of value, but it's really cool because the actual guests that come on, I mean, we're talking to people who own, you know, these are seven, eight figure and beyond companies or doing just amazing things, affecting lives in all sorts of ways. And now we're able to call these people friends and they'll just, they'll like recently my dad passed away and I, it was insane how much outpouring of love and support I got just through my text and email and Facebook. I mean, you're one of them, Doug. So thank you. Oh, thanks, man. And, I appreciate uh, that. Yeah. But, it, but it's it, like, that is what solidified to me. We're like, holy crap. Like we, we're living in a, in an interesting space where, you know, we, I just, we just grew this support network, like feels like overnight, but it's been, you know, 10 plus years in the works really. And now there's a human level to this all. It's not just business for us. Like we want to have a great life, uh, show others how to have a great life. But the fact that like the people that we're bringing on that we thought were untouchables at one point, even just a couple of years ago that we looked up to and we still do in a lot of ways, of course. Um, now these people are peers and like there's no other way that we could have done that without the podcast other than, you know, flying out to people and doing, I mean, we're doing this all virtually. So it's, at least for now. Um, <laughs> I know so. it's great. It's crazy. Again, as that professional speaker turned podcaster for me, and I only spent a couple of years doing the, the speaking um, route and, you know, the whole circuit there, but mm-hmm. I could tell very quickly that this was not going to be an environment that I'm like, mm, I'm loving this because I spend a lot of time in hotel rooms and, you know, I wasn't even doing like 50 jobs a year. I might've been doing 30 and that's, that's still out of my home two or three times every month. And, mm-hmm. uh, and in a hotel and uh, meeting an audience that I don't know, being a rock star for literally 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes, and then just going back to my hotel room. And I was like, that didn't feed any. I mean, that felt, felt, fed my ego for about 45 minutes to 75 <laughs> minutes. But, yeah. then, but then I thrive on those relationships. And so yeah. all of that stuff is, is so essential. I, that to me, and again, I, I, maybe you can speak to this for a second, but that was the hidden gift that I got from podcasting that I had never expected to get. I had no idea that was even there for me. What do you think about that? I agree. Yeah, that, that was not our intention from the get-go. Like, so the intention with the podcast was straight up give away free content. So the, the reason we shifted back into podcasting and made it a big, the biggest part of our content generation and the way that we give value is that we believe that our best stuff shouldn't be locked behind a paywall. And we wanted to essentially just showcase not only our own thoughts in the best way we could, but 
uh, you know, our friends and peers and, and the folks we look up to, that's, that was always, has always been and still is the backbone of our show. And, uh, you know, so the networking side of it really wasn't forefront of our attention. But now that we see it, like we're achieving both of those and more, obviously, and there's a whole money system, a monetized system happening be- behind the scenes. And, and since all of this, now there's interesting partnerships literally coming to our doorstep like every week, every other day, it sometimes feels like that's where the overwhelm can creep in. Yeah. Yeah. So. Partnership. Yeah. Partnerships will definitely, you know, you're looking through emails and you're thinking, is this somebody that really wants to, you know, it's like, I have a great idea for you. You know, I t- yeah. never thought about this. And I'm like, is this somebody that really even knows me? I mean, I, don't even, sure. I mean, they haven't even spent time to, I'm not saying that I need that to, to be wooed and dated and, and courted in order to go into a partnership with somebody. But I'm like, I haven't even had a freaking phone call with somebody and they're yeah. already like ready to dump all of their stuff in my lap and say, Hey, let's partner on this. I'm like, those emails that I get in the LinkedIn, whatever you call it, mm. LinkedIn mail, what's it called? Mail link or mail? Uh, in mail know. or something. In mail, that's right. Yeah. The in mail <laughs> stuff. And I'm like, that shows how much time I spend on social media anymore. <laughs> and it's like, dude, you don't even know me. How do you want to partner with me? You could hate me. You know, I may have a horrible yeah. family life. You might not even, I, I don't I actually have a really good family yeah, life, but you don't yeah. know me enough to be able to want to partner with me. And I'm thinking you have to have some relationship with somebody before you start to uh, to do business with them or you're going to be caught in a bad scene. Yeah, and that's that's 100% true. And the more you get attention, it doesn't matter what how you do this podcast or not, but just the more attention you have in your business, I feel like the more traffic and the more people are sharing, more of that's going to happen. So these filters really should, you just really work on creating what... What, what are the bumper lanes? Like, you know, if you're thinking of bowling alley, like you got to have some bumpers in the gutters and make sure you're not just going to spill over the edge every freaking time because it could be a great opportunity, but it completely can, can detract <laughs> you from your momentum. Right, right. And, and that, that's honestly bit, bit us in the ass in the past. And that's where, you know, we, we now work with coaches to help us kind of refine what is it that we actually want in the next not only year but you know five ten years more or less it's not gonna be perfect but at least it'll kind of give you a guiding light so you're not like you're not super wide you know spread like if you're thinking of like a flashlight or something trying to shine a flashlight you're not super wide but at the same time you're not tunnel vision not too narrow just enough (laughs) to kind of steer within the lane what do you think what do you think about um you know we're both into the podcasting world and we're both in pretty much both feet so this is a this is a pretty um interesting time because what if tomorrow podcasting dries up or do you see that as even a possibility of it going away um at any point in the uh in the near future and uh and i also want to talk about because there are such a variety of ways to to monetize a podcast we have a completely different approach than you guys do and yet now, you're a couple of years beyond in building your business while we started our podcast around the same time that we started our business just a handful of years ago. You got mm-hmm. a couple more years on us, so I'm hoping we can get to that seven-figure and eight-figure uh, business building. But let's, you, um, and I appreciate you saying that, I, and I'm, I've got my, my eggs all in this basket. But let's go back to the beginning part of that. Do you think that there is a, um, a, a danger in putting both feet into the podcasting world right now? I think... I, I don't think there's a danger. Um, there's no doubt that things are going to change over the years to come. Things are changing every day with the technology, with uh, attention, with how podcasting works, tracking, metrics, all that stuff. Um, I, I, I would think it would be kind of foolish not to have a foot in podcasting, though. And But being very intentional with how this show aligns with your business, if that's what the intention is because a lot of folks, even smart business owners will start a podcast just because people say, Hey, you should have a podcast or, you know, you see it on Saturday night live. People are making fun of podcasts now. (laughs) So that's a sign that podcasts are kind of going mainstream Um, is you got to tie it to your business and you can have a passion podcast and that's okay. And that's totally, I have one of those. I have one Ford Mustang, the early years. I have 300 listeners, 20 episodes in, and I got about 6,000 or 6,500 downloads. And I'm like, dude, I I love it. There's no money in it, but I just do it because I love it. Once a week podcast episode comes out and just like people passionate about podcasting. I mean, people passionate about Mustangs. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty cool, but no money in it. that, That was never the intention of that. 
Yeah. And think like for that, you can probably get some cool invites to Mustang events or maybe a sponsorship if you really want it. And, you know, at least offset your costs, even though I know it's your own. <laughs> Wait a minute. All built in. Yeah, all built in. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but no, that's, that's a very good point. Like passion projects, amazing because you obviously know what you love. You might as well do more of that. And then with the business, you definitely want to do what you love still, but figure out a way of how that podcast can feed your business or whatever intention comes from that show. And that's the key piece. It's crazy like how it's, it's so easy to say that, but uh, just blending those two, a podcast into a business, it's really a big disconnect right now. And a lot of smart business owners still don't understand how to do that. Well, just keep in mind, Nice Guy Community, again, if you're looking at starting a podcast or thinking about getting into it, uh, you don't have to go into the podcast world because you want to be a podcaster or podcasting is the industry that you're going to go into. Uh, Matt and Joe are great at content marketing. They just happen to put together a podcast that helps you with that as well. And they teach marketing or content marketing as a part of their approach on the show. But that's not in the podcasting world. But I'm sure a ton of people have come to you and said, hey, can you teach me how to do that with podcasting too? And, and yeah. it's although you're not in the podcasting business, you were drawn into it because people have said to you so many times, teach me how to do what you've done with your podcast. That's a hundred percent what's happened. And now partnerships to be more of the podcast marketer are happening and to be on at events and speak all over the place. And yeah, it wasn't like we put it out there. We're like, we are podcasters. Hear us roar. Like, and like, no, we just have been consistent. We do things with the intention that, Hey, all this is is content marketing in a different form. And all we're trying to do is amplify our efforts as best as possible or extend our efforts from that one hour we're spending recording, we want to make sure that that one hour is taken all over the place. Like we can repurpose that stuff in so many different ways. And in doing that, we're providing better value to our listeners, our readers now, our email list, our subscribers, all of these things get, you know, it turns into a physical product that we can charge monthly for in the notes. I mean, that's really the intention is we want to simplify our process as much as possible, but give the most value. And that's where we see podcasting. It's just so easy to leverage that system. It's not always easy to do unless you have the right systems and people like yourself to do production and a lot of the stuff that people get hung up on. That's the issue is people get hung up on pieces that they just shouldn't be involved with. So if you're looking at a big pie graph for a second and you and you say, okay, this percentage of my business, whether it's through your, and networking is also a part of the podcast world as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, hit, the hidden gift that I was talking about earlier, what percentage of your business would you say comes from your podcast without any outside help? Hmm. Man, it's so hard to track, but I would say it's, oh man, just from the podcast, it's, it's well over 50%. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably even higher than that because I know everything mixes so well with us. It blends, but I, I a hundred percent, like right now we're actually, you know, we're, we're going to have this event in Orlando. That's all about just a mastermind, some podcast stuff and all that. And it's coming mainly from our email list and our podcast. I would mm-hmm. say those are the two big drivers. And Typically, those are inter- intertwined, really. Right, because you probably got a lot of your email list from your podcast. Totally. <laughs> so yeah. That, but, that happens as well. But the trust on the podcast, like there's no way to match that trust because uh, as you yeah. were saying, you know, you're, uh, there's just so many ways that, um, you know, you're, you were listening to the one we're in Orlando, a podcast movement, making up words and stuff. That specific episode right there has brought us in a handful of clients and and also just feedback. Literally, one person was like, I was about to toss the, my, the towel in on my business. Like I was going to give up. But that one episode gave me the inspiration enough and some ideas to keep it going. I actually am pumped up now. Wow. And that's just from Matt and I. <laughs> it actually, that, that episode had no planning. Typically, we don't have a lot of planning behind yeah, our, I'm with, yeah, our same solos. Way, same, same. Yeah. And that's the best stuff. And, and people, I feel like the trust is built because we are just us. And we've been told that like at New Media Summit with you, people are like, holy crap, you're the same person you are 
on the podcast as you are. Uh, that's, e- that's easy to tell. I mean, so easy to tell from your show, listen to some of your episodes. I, I want to go back and, lo- and listen to a lot more of the back catalog because I think you mm-hmm. guys really got a good thing going and you have a great <laughs> chemistry between the two of you. you actually yes. give, give great business advice. Uh, at the same time, uh, yeah, man, you are the same person that that's on the air as off the air. And I appreciate and respect that. And that's something that I try to model as much as I can. And, um, you know, while I still feel a little sometimes out of my element when I'm talking to some really, um, mm-hmm. you know, people that are ultra successful in the stuff that they do, you're that same person, you're that ultra successful guy, but you're so approachable, you know, it makes it so much easier to have a conversation with you than somebody that's, you know, written five, five best selling books and has a podcast with 20 million downloads or whatever. And I'm like, I feel intimidated by them. And uh, I just yeah. feel like you're just a good person to learn from. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Here's the thing. I feel like it's uh, no one can, I don't know if it was Jordan Harbinger or Jocko Willink. It was one of the two uh, was saying it's, it's like, if you go for this many episodes, like you're well over 800, we're just over 200. I mean, there's no way you can have an act that extends that long and not feel like there's a disconnect in yourself or the, you know, I'm sure there's some people out there that probably hear the disconnect if it's not actually you. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And and that's that's the key. It just makes life so much easier. People trust you more. Uh, we hear start hearing feedback like that, and then that trust is built in the podcast too. And then it turns in if you present an offer, or ask them to do something. More or less, you're gonna get a lot of people acting on that. And you don't need a massive podcast to to get those results. And well, to- yeah, spend just a moment uh, talking about that because I think what's interesting about it is, you know, if we boil it down, you know, if if we're we're just about at episode one thousand now, which is crazy, uh, you know, we have about three and a half million downloads on our show. But if you mm-hmm. if you really look at the numbers, ah, that's somewhere between three and thirty five hundred listeners per per episode, let's say, or somewhere around there, maybe even less. That's not a lot of listeners when you really think about it. it. I mean, there are some shows that have two and 300 listeners. I'm like, okay. I mean, even the newer shows, shows that have two and 300 listeners, I'm very proud of my clients that have two and 300 listeners. Imagine sure. filling a room with two and 300 people every time you speak. They're all listening to you. They, they have actively sought you out and they are, they are on demand listening to you because they want to be there. Yeah. Well, think about I, I was just uh, speaking on a panel with our buddy Steve Olsher the other day in front of some brilliant freaking people in the room. These guys are doing seven, eight figures. And we were up there and, and Steve was saying straight up like, yeah, you don't need a lot of people and you don't need to do this whole drawn out, complicated marketing process. You could just invite people to go on a discovery or an audit call of whatever it is that your topic's around. And you know, you just prompt people to go send you an email and be like, Hey, you know, I'm offering 15 or 30 minute chats, you know, this month, it's a special, you know, I'm blocking off X amount of spots for you. And I bet you can probably make the same amount of money on like a show, like you said, 200, 500 people listening per month as compared to a show that's massive that just doesn't know how to monetize or has it directly connected to their business. Well, just spend a quick moment just talking about that, and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up. I'm well beyond where I told you I would be. I said, "Yeah, we're well, 35 minutes." Oh, I'm good. like, oh, "Now we're now we're an hour into this thing." I'm like, "Because the conversation is so, you know." Again, I can feel like I can be me a little bit more, and maybe maybe yeah. that's maybe the lesson learned in this particular episode with you, Joe. Again, I, I learned this the last time because you were just such a you know straightforward, legitimate, genuine guy. Is that? I just want to be that guy. I, w- I just want to be more me every time I open the the, uh, the microphone up because I don't read a lot of books, although I get probably you know, 20 books a month now. And I, I, pre- I bet I have 100 books on my shelf. Uh, I, most of them, 90% of those books, have only read a, a portion of, probably 10% have read cover to cover. But mm-hmm. I, that is the lesson that I've, uh, that I've learned from you and some, uh, some really positive, uh, forward-thinking podcasters as well about just be your fucking self, you know, just yeah. be yourself and you will, you will get the trust of your, of your community. Yeah. Um, so. Spend just a quick moment before we wrap up though. I want to talk about the nuts and bolts of actually how you make money from your show, because I think, you know, everybody knows guest to client strategy works well for me. 
Uh, we do some advertising dollars. We have some affiliate relationships. We have the joint venture partnerships that we do. We get some money from advertising and sponsorship. Um, we, we were getting donations at one point, but we closed that down. And we're like, why are we taking money from people? <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, now, so now it's like, okay, four or five ways. I mean, we've diversified how we are making our money using the Nice Guys on Business podcast and our new show called Turnkey Podcast as well, which is our production company too. But um, tell our community how you've actually done some of the nuts and bolts of making that business turn into seven figures in, you know, in just a few years. Yep. Yeah. So, I, so our process, I'll just give you that kind of the high level map and then break down some of the things is podcast is where everything starts. So that's like our content generation machine. Um, and that lives on our blog at Evergreen Profits. Uh, dot com. So that's the hub for everything we do. And we do that on purpose. So we we're not, you know, the brand doesn't have a whole, you know, podcast doesn't have a separate site. This, we try to control everything under one roof. And on that site, you know, we have tracking Facebook pixels, Google pixels, all the stuff to capture the audience. I would say that's like the foundational items. Ever since day one of the podcast, we wanted to rely on ourselves and not iTunes to yeah, basically. Because they're so giving with all of their information. Apple loves oh us podcasters, don't they? Seriously. And then you know, Spotify is not going to be any better to you. So um, <laughs> figure out how to control your audience as best as possible. So that's like the big why behind this whole system even works. Um, so just wanted to start there first. Yeah, sure. So the podcast content machine right there trust building that's where our audience starts initially so you know getting subscribers so we're always trying to get people on the uh subscribe to the podcast but also in there we always have a call to action as you alluded to earlier is hey you don't have to take the notes on this podcast we know there's a lot going on you might be driving or washing dishes or you know whatever baby's going crazy uh we took care of this for you and they're absolutely free for this episode this is kind of my call to action on there is you have a couple weeks to go grab the the uh, the notes. Just go to hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. And we also, we'll also have like a text number as well, which I don't remember right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so essentially the intention there is get them on the list. You know, get them on our email list to follow up with folks. So we give a little scarcity play about two week window to get the, that specific episode's notes for free. And, um, you know, after that window of time, we say that goes away in our vault. Uh, we, it's a small subscription, but, you know, we don't really hint too much at that. We just want to get them to take that action with us, uh, which works really well. Uh, right after they get on our list, we upsell them or we, we or, so we give them obviously what we um, promise them in the free notes. And they actually get four episodes of free notes, which is nice. pretty cool. Uh, the, but we, we get then give them an, um, an invitation and upsell to go join our subscription, our physical newsletter, where we send something, uh, these notes from all the previous month's episodes. So there's eight, uh, in that newsletter, we send them, uh, to their doorstep for $15. Doesn't matter where it's at. $15 a month gives them full access to these basically cliff notes, uh, takeaway action guides of the episode. So. You know, we're like, hey, 15 bucks. I mean, you think you're going to make your money back off of one year <laughs> per month? Uh, it's it's a big time saving. So that's that's what's cool. So we're getting them on that physical newsletter. That's another audience pool now we can work with. So we have them on an email list. We have them on the physical newsletter. Uh, we do follow ups all the time. So we're, you know, we're constantly giving more value and we're hinting to like, hey, you realize you can, uh, you know, get a lot, a lot more of this stuff if you join our physical newsletter or membership. So we're always giving subtle call to actions to go join the newsletter. Uh, with the newsletter now and also our email follow-ups, we can market our own offers. So, you know, like this event coming up or anything else that we're doing, uh, our programs, maybe our referral partners as well, like yourself, we can promote that kind of stuff inside our newsletter. We can also demand sponsorships and um, and charge even higher rates because not only do we have the podcast uh, attention from the audience, but we have our newsletter audience. That's yeah, we've great. been really big on brand sponsorship, not just podcast listening audience sponsorship. Based upon some uh, you know industry standards, we would probably be making about seventy five dollars an episode for sponsorship instead of making five hundred bucks from a sponsor. And I know that even the five hundred dollars is is kind of uh, is kind of on the the low end. There are companies that are making fifteen hundred, three thousand, five thousand dollars a month from a sponsor just to just to put them in a handful of episodes. So yeah, yeah. sponsorship is a way to do it too. 
Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's in a high level nutshell. It's yeah. Podcast, get them on the email from the podcast and we're trying to follow up, you know, with them to basically get them into our physical newsletter. And then from there, the newsletter and also just all these buckets of audience pools, you can monetize audience pool, like with sponsorships, like you were saying, you can affiliate agreements or arrangements. You can do your own offers, consultation services, all that stuff can happen behind the scenes once you have them on an email list. So the idea of- behind it, again, Nice Guy Community, is you're, as you're listening to this or Turnkey Podcast Community, if you're listening to this as well, I'm not sure where we're airing this one quite yet or maybe in all of the, all of the above places. <laughs> I mean, that's the way to go. It's the multi-tier opportunity for bringing in income to your, to your podcast without relying upon one specific way to do it because if something happens to that one way if you know i would hate to have a ten thousand dollar sponsor there's somebody that was in our i can't remember who it was in the mastermind maybe i wouldn't even want to mention his or her name if i do but they're doing something like 35 or forty thousand dollars in sponsorship from one or two different sponsors and i'm thinking Mm -hmm. if that one sponsor leaves you that's a that's a pretty big hit to take i don't think that i have any you know i don't want to lose a client that's worth 10 grand a year to me but I got 49 others, that, you yeah. know, that, that I have if something like that happens. Not that I ever want to lose a client or do anything wrong. You're right. No, you're right. Is is and that that's it's diversification. That's all we're trying to do. It's getting a lot of a little, and you know, guys like Steve Ulsher have and and like everyone has their own ways of thinking about it. So like when Steve and we're all on the panel together, um, he was like, you know. For me or for him, he says, you know, he goes straight for like a consultation type thing, a bigger ticket offer. And, uh, you know, and I was like, well, yeah, and you can even wrap that approach with our approach of the newsletter. You know, for him, he'll say, you know, kind of stepping over um, dollars to dollars get to, to pennies get dime. right, right. Or dimes. Yeah. And, um, you know, so what I said, I was like, yeah, and <laughs> you could actually do this newsletter approach, get a subscription base, like a foundation for your show. So you have this recurring income and then you can put, uh, yeah, an offer to go do some consultation or any other thing that branches out from that point. Once you have them captured as an audience to follow up with. So, so that's, that's the key there. So somebody out in our listening audience right now, whether they're a turnkey podcast uh, listener or a nice guys listener is looking at getting into podcasting. Any advice that you can give to the green uh, soon to be podcaster that's out there? I, I mean, I'm not looking for a plug here I, at all. I'm looking for advice to, to, that you can give to them so that they can, Hey, I think this is the spot for me to get started in. Yeah. I, I would say, take a look at what you're currently doing with your content marketing. Everyone's doing something with content in their business, even if it is just hopping on phone calls with all of your your uh, prospects or clients. And look at podcasting and see how can I take what I'm already doing and then create it as a podcast episode. It could just be you yourself talking into the mic, you know, with like a few bullet points of things you would want to talk about that's around like a specific subject. And start voicing out some of this stuff you're just already giving to people, either th- even if it's just social media posts. Uh, you know, so many people post interesting things on social and or you have an opinion about something and specifically in your niche or your industry, uh, that can, that's a podcast. You can riff for 20, 30 minutes on that specific subject and and be consistent about it. And that's really... I would say that's where to start because a lot of people get hung up on the content and it's like, we all have the content in our heads. It's just putting that in a recorded base. So more people can see this thing because it doesn't take long. Like you were saying to get like the first hundred or 200 people listening to you. And typically those initial people are the ones that stick for a very long time. They resonate with you. And uh, you know, from there it, all this stuff can develop. You can start putting offers out there pretty dang quickly. And I would, I would imagine you can bring in the money from your efforts within the first month or two, you know, if you're consistent about that. And really you can, that'll light you up to kind of keep doing it more and more. Uh, key thing being consistent with it all. 
Yeah, I totally hear what you're saying. And I would love to have you if I, I, I certainly want to invite you. And I think we've done this. We just had to reschedule. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I want to invite you back to our one of our coaching calls, because I think yes. that you're going to get you, we we as podcasters need all of that information, not because we need to be overwhelmed with the variety of ways, but because there is going to be something that Joe and Matt are going to say, or something that I'm going to say, you know, as as my mom always used to tell me, you know, mm -hmm. she could be saying the same thing over and over and over and over again to me. And then one of my teachers says the same thing. And I take the teacher's advice over my mom's advice. Like, <laughs> Hey, you never know where you're going to get the advice from, or it's just being told from a slightly different perspective. So now that you listen, it's like, I always tell people, you know, just a couple, of, if you just put together a handful of episodes and you go at it with the intent that you actually can make money from this or create an offer from this or build a list from this or do anything or, you know, any of those things, you will accomplish it. And I have people that come back after six months or eight months or even a year and say, it's just not working. And I'm like, well, you're not trying then because I, I know it works. I mean, I'm, I'm proving the pudding. I'm not doing anything that is like, oh my God, you guys are the greatest. I just, I literally am following a system that I've created myself, put it together a thousand times. You do anything a thousand times, you're going to get good at it. Even if you, even if you don't even do it well. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's it is just don't overthink it. Start with what you're comfortable with. So that's why I kind of say start with some content you're already familiar, you're excited about. And don't get tricky with your microphones, you just get good enough USB right. microphones, something right. that just sounds good and, yep. and just record and production. Yeah, you guys are an amazing service. I'm sure a lot of folks can probably edit simple audio themselves yep. to start yep. if they want to. Yep, exactly. Nothing wrong with that. So yep. many, yeah, I mean, it's just, but again, consistency and, and, and give it time, give it space. Don't feel like it's an overnight success because podcasts do take a little bit of time to moment, you know, gain momentum, but that's okay because you can really do a lot within that stage of building momentum as well, where you'll, you'll see the fruits come from, from your hard work and podcasting, but it's going to be fun work. I feel like that's the most, uh, it's the most like a uh, unselfish thing you can do really is to give so much out there to people you don't see and yeah. you don't yeah. typically talk to, but the right people will come to you. And I'll say like, these are going to be the people that you really do want to work with. Like our best clients come from our podcast because they, they're jiving with us, our personalities. They're yeah, talking they're like here. us. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I listened to yeah. it. It's amazing. JJ's uh, community is so connected with her. I mean, she gets all of her live events come from her podcast community. It's like the moment they walk in the door, they are already so they're 90% there. When, when, and when I say there, they're already 90% understanding. They don't, there's no trust that needs to be built. They've, they've yeah. already been listening to her for you know, two, three, four, five years of her show. And they're just showing up and now just getting to work. And that's the best part when you have a, uh, a live event and you got like, uh, and I'm, I'm terrified of live events because I keep thinking I'm going to throw a party and nobody's going to come. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do that. I let JJ do the live events. I kind of like making my money one client at a time. I hate to say it, but you know, I just haven't gotten into the scalability side, but, but yeah, you're right. To everyone listening, Doug is freaking amazing in front of people and you can go at all of an event. So <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do not do it all. I do. I usually end up crying a lot <laughs> at, the front, at the front of the room. You have to deal like, with your emotions. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I definitely am. I'm very, I'm very emotional. Man, yeah. Joe, I so appreciate you, you being here and uh, we got to wrap because I actually have another interview three minutes ago. So uh -oh. <laughs> that's, that's okay. I sent them a tech, I sent them a, uh, an email in the middle of it just saying, I'm just going to be a few minutes late. It's okay. But man, cool. your, uh, your information is always so great. Looking forward to having you on the coaching call. And, yes. and uh, if you are listening to this, make sure you head over to evergreenprofits.com or podhacker.com or yeah. listen to the Hustle and Flow Chart podcast. Uh, get it on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you get your podcast. Great, great stuff, Joe, man. I, I appreciate you being on the show and, and for sharing yeah. all of your great information with our team. This is fun, Doug. Thanks for having me back on again. My pleasure. Many more trips to come to the Nice Guys and the Turnkey Podcast. Nice Guy community, never underestimate the power of nice. Again, special thanks to Joe Fear and his, his, um, his absentee partner, Matt Wolf. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> today. I don't think he stood us up. I don't think he ever committed to coming. I don't, I don't think he knew about it. To, to give him full credit. And that full he's credit. Right. Full credit. He would be here if he actually scheduled the appointment. But Joe, Joe is here, and have I appreciate him, have it. him back individually or something. He'll you'll get his talk, perspective. Soon. Talk about. It. I think I'd have to have Strickland do the episode because I would. I'm a little. Af- I'm a little afraid of of, uh, of Matt. He's got such such great. Not not that you don't have a lot of great information, but um, he is more of the details guy, and I get yes. really. I, I get a little bit flustered when I don't remember any details so (laughs) man appreciate you being here all right see you later joe thanks again for being here the nice guys on business are professional podcasters please do not try this at home it may seem simple kids but lots of people get hurt in the process void where prohibited including mexico puerto rico fredonia or your in-laws the nice guys on business are not responsible for any claims of liability or any guarantee that these two morons know what they're talking about there is no promise that being nice to people will help your business but calling people assholes dumb incontinent fuckwads will definitely lose you business for any and all claims shit in one hand and wish in the other and see which one fills up first Thank you for listening to the Nice Guys on Business podcast. I'm Steve O'Brien. Nice guys, nothing but nice guys. Hey, I'm Steve O'Brien, and I'd like to endorse my good friends, Dan and Stan on the Nice Guys on Business podcast. We have been so close for so many years, and the fact that I'm getting paid has nothing to do with the authenticity of this endorsement. The Nice Guys on Business. Good going there, Dan and Stan. What do they make of this? A pterodactyl. A brooch. I just want to tell you all good luck. We're all counting on you. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.